watch. Here's what we're going to do. Now, this deck of cards that I have here is actually a pretty interesting deck because it can actually do something pretty cool because every single card in the deck can do its own piece of magic. It could do its own magic trick. It's pretty cool, right? And every single card can do a unique magic trick. Each one can do its own magic trick. Uh, you, you look like you don't believe me. You know what? Fine. I'll prove it to you. I will prove it to you. Here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to... Uh, cut your card to the middle of the deck very badly and I'm just going to uh, riffle through the cards and whenever you call stop that'll be your card. Stop! Alright, we'll stop right there. You can see this card right here. In this case, let's see, it's ooh, the Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts can do a really cool magic trick. She is, she's kind of one of the best magicians in the deck in my opinion. So uh, let me show you what she does. What we'll do, we'll just take the Queen uh, right here in my hand just like this and all we're going to do And just like that, you can actually see the Queen of Hearts is actually fused into the card box. And if you were actually here, you have to take my word for it, but if you were actually here, you could feel the card box. You could feel it, it's not just a card taped to it. Like this card is legitimately fused into the card box. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah and today we're going to be learning something pretty, pretty cool. Now, chances are if you have been in magic for a little while, what you saw in the performance probably did not fool you. And that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to provide you guys with a pretty cool magic trick that I think you guys will enjoy. Now, uh, before I continue any further, we hit a very exciting milestone on this channel. We got 100 subscribers. We actually have well past 100 subscribers now. Um, we hit 100 subscribers a while back actually. I haven't made a video since get hitting 100 subscribers, however. Uh, I remember. Uh, I was making a video and then I was like, oh man, we almost have 100 subscribers, so to kind of pass the time, I made a video public. Now, you might see my latest video is a video that actually I made a while back. Uh, and this video is a video that was originally like an unlisted tutorial uh, that was available as like a bonus tutorial. Um, but ultimately I decided it would be cool since we were hitting 100 subscribers to uh, just make that video public. So I made it public and uh, there it is. That's uh, the video that I have most recent. Uh, and I've, I've got some ideas sort of in the air for a few videos since then, but I haven't really gotten back into the uh, track of making videos. Uh, but I finally am, and I am here with an absolutely amazing trick for you guys today. Um, this trick is a, another trick that is a gimmicked trick, or basically it requires uh, a gimmick that you have to construct yourself. Uh, and I've done two other types of these videos on the channel before. Uh, the first one was uh, for a trick by Jay Sankey called Juicier Fruit. The second one was for another trick by Jay Sankey called Reveal Link. Um, and this one is another Jay Sankey creation. But uh, I have a few, I had a few extra, I, well, the basis for this trick was based off of a, an idea Jay Sankey had, but I took this idea and I took it a little bit further and made it more my own. And so now it's almost a completely different trick from what he did, same principle, same idea, but ultimately the method for it is a little bit different. So I'm gonna show you how I do it and I'm also gonna show you how he does it. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description box to the video where I got this from, this idea from. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so anyway, I can't wait, and, uh, let's just get into the tutorial. Alright, in this video, I will be using blue bicycle playing cards, uh, blue bicycle standard playing cards, but I'm not actually using that box for this, so, uh, anyway, let's just get into it. So here's all you need to perform the effect. All you need to perform the effect is you need a blue deck of cards, or really any bicycle deck of cards, uh, either red or blue. Uh, this trick works with both, works with both. Uh, but you're just going to need a deck of cards that matches your gimmick, okay? So in this case, since I'm using a blue bicycle uh, card box gimmick, I am going to use a blue bicycle deck to match it. Uh, so this is the gimmick that you need. It's basically a card box, but it has this Queen of Hearts fused onto it. And let me show you how you can get that gimmick. All right, so in order to get the free gimmick, it's completely free to get this gimmick, um, all you have to do is go to the description box of this YouTube video. Uh, you may have to press the show more button and it'll, you'll find a link that'll take you to this page here. The only requirement to get this free gimmick is to sign up for, 
uh, this free Card Magic Academy newsletter. Uh, it's just a newsletter where um, uh, I just inform you on some magic stuff that's going on. Uh, mostly just random stuff related to magic every week. And um, yeah, and that's all your, the only requirement you have to have to get this gimmick, plus all the other magic gimmicks, uh, two of them, others currently besides the one that I'm teaching you guys today, uh, that are available through this link. So uh, you can either go to right here on the, this, and you can enter your email here, or you can go to my uh, Card Magic Academy website as well, and simply scroll down to the very bottom of any page, and you'll enter, see this little box here where you can enter your email and have the same effect. So, whichever one you choose, all you have to do is enter your email, and you press the subscribe and get the gimmick button. And once you've done that, you'll see this little green confirmation box that is just basically telling you uh, how to get the gimmick. Once you have entered your email and pressed subscribe, you should receive an email that says confirm your request. And all you have to do now to get your gimmick, or gimmicks, for because there are three gimmicks, is to press confirm subscription. And it will open this web page here, which says thank you uh, for subscribing to the free Card Magic Academy newsletter. And all you have to do is there are three tricks on this page, three different gimmicks that you can use. And all you have to do uh, to get these gimmicks is press this button right here, which says watch in order to watch the tutorial video that I uploaded on YouTube for each trick. And then you can get the PDF right here. So today's trick that I'm teaching you guys, Final Fusion, is right down here at the bottom. Right here, Final Fusion, and as you can see right here is a PDF with uh, all of the different uh, card boxes uh, that you can use to do this trick. And all you have to do to get this and print this out is to press a Download PDF. And once you've pressed Download PDF, you should have the PDF right here. You can download it, print it out, whatever. So now, all that's left to do is to print out the gimmick, and then I'll show you how to construct the gimmick. And once you have the gimmick printed out, it should look like this. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when I was showing you guys how to print this out was that it is important that you make sure you print this out on cardstock because if you print this out on regular paper, it won't feel like a card box and also it won't hold together and it won't really hold playing cards at all. Uh, it'll fall apart really easily. Uh, so it's important that you print this out on cardstock. Now, true. Uh, it's, it's designed to look like a bicycle rider back box and even the color blue isn't quite the same. Uh, and obviously the stock that you're using to print this out isn't exactly the same either, uh, but that's okay. You know, it's not a professionally printed gimmick, uh, It's but it works. Uh, people are completely fooled. They think this is just a regular bicycle box because most people don't pay attention to the card box. I mean, most people end up losing their card boxes anyway, uh, I find. So pretty much uh, this works out for you. Now, I just print it on regular cardstock paper. If you want, you can go and you can get textured cardstock paper so that you print it out on like a texture that's more similar to uh, like what would be a card box would be if you want or like a, like a glossy cardstock. It really doesn't matter though. Uh, I always, I've printed out my gimmicks on just regular cardstock and it works. Now, there are a few options that you have here when it comes to the gimmick. One of the things that I didn't necessarily like about Jay Sankey's original handling of it, which although it was a really cool trick, I wanted to push it further was that you could only use the two of clubs uh, in your gimmick, and you could only use regular blue bicycle cards. So I didn't like that option, so I've expanded it. So I've, const I've made this PDF with eight pages so that you can use uh, red or blue bicycle cards, and you have three options for what card can be fused into the card box. You have the Queen of Hearts, the Three of Spades, and the Eight of Diamonds. Those are the three cards that are being used in the performance. I used the Queen of Hearts. I decided for the tutorial, I'll just use the Eight of Diamonds. Okay? So those are the three options you have to have a card, plant card, fuse onto the card box. And then there's also one more option that you have here, and that is to just print out a regular card box. If you want to, you can print out a regular card box that matches the gimmick card boxes, except for it doesn't have a card fused on it. So you can show this box freely at the beginning of the trick and then switch it out later in the trick for a gimmick um, card box. And that's an option that you do have with uh, my new PDF that I have available for you. Let me show you, I'm gonna put those away for a second and I'm gonna show you how to construct this gimmick. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a pair of scissors in this case, I'm using really, really small scissors, and you're also going to need a glue stick. A few moments later. Bam. I have scissors and a glue stick. All right, and that's really all you need to construct this box gimmick. And let me show you how to do this. 
So the first thing I recommend you do is to just cut down the paper so it's a little bit smaller and a little bit easier to cut. Once you've cut it down a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to work with, now comes the trickier part of cutting. So I recommend you start on this right side here of the card box and you're just gonna cut right up. I know there's not a line here, but you're gonna cut right along there because this is a side flap that you're going to use to glue the whole thing together. And you're gonna to wanna to cut a lot straighter than I just did. Then you're gonna cut along this blue line here that's slanted upward. Now this is very important. There's no line here, but you're gonna to wanna to cut straight across as best you can so that you can get the top of this uh, card box here. Because obviously that's this back part right here. And I'll show you how to cut this little um, groove here in a second. Once you've done that, I recommend you just cut down right here and you're gonna cut along this blue line right here and take that piece off like that. Now, uh, it's important that when you cut this, I recommend you cut a little bit inside of the blue lines if you can. It doesn't matter. Uh, this gimmick here was probably, I think this was like the first gimmick I ever made. And as you can see, there's still some blue lines visible, but you don't really ever notice it. Uh, or I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but uh, it's okay if there are some blue lines there, but it's if you want to cut a little bit inside these like lines, these bluish lines, that's great. Uh, just so that you don't see those blue lines, it's fine. Anyway, once you come here, all you're going to want to do is you're, I'm, I would come on this side now and cut straight down along this line here. And once again, there's no line right here. You're just going to have to assume where it would be and cut straight down. Just like that. And then I would cut straight along right here on this side of the card box because it's all one straight thing. Once you do that, you should be here. Uh, now we can just cut along here and you're pretty much just following the lines from here. I'm gonna cut right here and just cut this little part off here. And then all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these flaps back here. Now it's very important, you don't actually have to cut the flaps exactly as you see them here. You can if you want, and I did that on my first gimmicks, but you don't actually have to. All you have to do is just cut this little line off here and then you're gonna cut right up, like just like that, so that you get that little here. And so basically you then have this makeshift flap that is, there's still blue lines visible, but no one's ever gonna see it because it's on the inside of the card box. And then you're gonna do the same thing here. You're gonna cut up along these lines here and along this line here. And then you're gonna come here and cut that little part strip off on the bottom. Once you cut it a little bit like that, now we're gonna come back up to the top part up here and we're gonna uh, work with this top part. This top part is probably the trickiest part to cut just to get it to the point where it looks like a card box. So the first thing I would do is cut right here. Then I would cut down like this, like that. And do the same thing on the other side. And then you're gonna cut in just a little bit. You see where this blue line is right here? I would cut a little bit beneath it just because if you cut where the blue line actually is, it's not gonna actually work out the way it's supposed to, the way a card box actually operates. So you're gonna cut a little bit beneath it, but you're gonna cut the length of that blue line. And once you do that, as you can see right here, if you actually take a close up look at this, you can see on an actual gimmick, you can see how this blue line is right here and you're cutting a little bit beneath it. That's just because that's the way a card box actually folds because if you cut where the blue line is actually supposed to be, you won't get that same effect. Then you're just gonna cut along this arch at the top. And once you've done that, you should have a card box that's cut like this. There is one, there are a few final cuts you need to make though. You're gonna wanna cut this little slant off right here on each side of the flaps. Once you've cut off those flaps, it's very important that you're gonna come here now to get these flaps. You're gonna cut along this blue line right here like that just like that all right and there's one final cut you're gonna make you're gonna go back into where those flaps end and you're gonna cut down just a little bit about halfway through the top of the B and bicycle okay and you'll see why because while this isn't marked I actually noticed this uh, because this is actually a feature on a card box that makes it even more like a card box so you're gonna cut about halfway down that B and I think I'm gonna cut just a little bit further to match the other side. All right, once you have that, it's now time to start folding. So there are quite a few folds that need to be made. Uh, the first fold that I would recommend you do is just on the side here. I would work from right to left 
Uh, so start just by folding this flap over here, just like this. And you're not gonna be folding along the lines exactly, um, but it doesn't matter, right? I would recommend folding it back and forth so that you get a nice crease when you finally go to glue it together, all right? Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna move in a little bit. We're gonna fold right here. And it's also important to note that when you fold, you wanna try and fold right along cut lines as well. That way, uh, everything lines up pretty perfectly. All right, then once again, we'll move in a little bit further to right here, fold right here. Once we fold in right there, then we're gonna move once again outward over here and we're gonna fold right there. All right, and once we've done all those folds, now it's time to do some bottom and top folds. We'll start by folding the bottom. For the bottom, you're just gonna fold this flap in and down like that. Then you're gonna, and you're just gonna do the same thing for every single other flap there. You're just gonna fold just like that. All right, so now that we folded those bottom flaps, we're gonna come to the top and fold the top flaps. So same thing here with these flaps on the side. We're gonna fold them down. Remember, you cut a little bit further than you're supposed to, so only fold them down about halfway, like that. Same thing on the other side. And you can also use those little blue lines here to help you line up. As you can see, there's a little blue line right here that allows you to help fold that a little bit better. All right, once you folded that, now it's time to fold the top flap. All you have to do to fold the top flap is fold right here along these like cuts right here. Then fold down between this part where it says poker here and then along the top of the bicycle front part of the box. Lining up again with the folds you made on the flaps right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to make fi one final fold by folding inward all the way down to where those cuts ended. This is a very important feature on a card box because as you can see, that feature is actually available on a card box. Now in this case, I cut a little bit too deep, uh, but that's okay uh, because at least that feature is still on there making it even more like a card box. And once you've made all those cuts, it's time to glue it together. All you have to do to glue it together is you're gonna start by folding this part over and gluing it to this part here where it says air cushion finish made in the USA. And you're gonna glue it right there, okay? So we're gonna put some glue right where it says glue. We're gonna line it up. And once we have it lined up, we're going to simply press it down and hold it. And you're gonna have to just press it and hold it with your fingers like this for a few minutes. And once you've held it for a little bit, it should be glued together just like this. All right, and then all you're gonna do now is you're gonna glue the rest of the box. So the next glue you have to put is right here on the bottom of the box. All you're gonna do, you're gonna fold in these flaps and you're just gonna glue everything together like this. Really all you have to do is fold these flaps in. You can really cut them off if you want, to be honest. Uh, and then you're just gonna fold this in where it says glue and then glue this part right on top of that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, my glue stick and I'm gonna put glue right here. And then I'm gonna glue that part down. And now all you're gonna do is you're going to take some cards and it doesn't matter what cards you use, you just wanna take some playing cards and you're gonna stick them right into the card box just to hold down that glue. And you're gonna set the card box up like this and you're gonna leave the card box like this, sitting up with the cards in it, and that's just gonna hold that bottom part down so it gets glued correctly. All right, and now we're gonna leave. We'll come back in a little bit uh, when we think it's dry. A few moments later. All right, so now that our card box has dried, you can see it's pretty much finished. There are a few things that I want to take care of first. Uh, it looks pretty much ready to perform with. Uh, there is one little thing here. You might see it's a little sticking up on that side, so I'm just gonna take a little piece of uh, double-sided tape just a tad little piece here. And I'm just going to take that up to kind of fix that. All right, so in order to do this trick, what we're gonna need is we're gonna first, uh, the idea basically is that we're going to be forcing the card that gets fused onto the card box. So in this case, we'll be forcing the eight of diamonds since that is the card that will be forced 
onto um, or the card that will be fused into the card box. We have our eight of diamonds and we can just place that on top of the deck um, and put that in the card box. And this is a really cool feature is that you could actually put the cards in the card box. Now, it's very important to note that this gimmick has been designed so that you can actually hold the box and cover up the gimmick part. If you put your thumb here and these three fingers up here, you can actually cover, you can actually hold the cards like this and completely cover up uh, this gimmick part of it. So you can then take the cards out of the box. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, a card box typically has a little like groove here, like a little, um, uh, like a semicircle. And all you have to do is just cut a little bit like that. Uh, it's, it's just basically something that you can do if you choose to. It's basically just, and just like that, we've cut pretty good semicircle, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can cut that as well, just to make it a little bit more, um, like an actual card box. But either way, once we've taken the cards out of the box, we can set the box off to the side back here. Whoops, I have to, I have to left a card in there. Um, that was the Eight of Diamonds. Uh, but anyway, all we're going to do now is we're just going to force the Eight of Diamonds on our spectator. So, of course, we can give the cards some shuffles beforehand making sure that we retain that eight of diamonds on top and then we can of course now force the eight of diamonds now in the performance i did a riffle force and i'll leave a link to where you can learn to do that down below uh because i've taught that on the channel before you can also do a number of other forces you can do like an underspread force which looks like this uh there are a whole bunch of different forces you can do all right so once again uh you go okay uh, just say stop actually go ahead and just touch a card uh, we'll stop right there you tap it in, and then you show it to them. Of course, you're showing them your forced card. You say, remember this card? Of course, it's the Eight of Diamonds. Now, when you put it back, if you want, you can control it back to the top so that you can later uh, palm it out and ditch it in your pocket or whatever. I didn't do that in performance, though, but you can do whatever you want. However, once you finish forcing it, um, you can do one of two things. The way Jay Sankey did it in his uh, video was that he held it out like this, and he dropped the card box like that. And all he's doing there is he's going to pull the card out and then pull it back. Pulling it, put it, pushing it out, and pulling it back. And he's going to drop the card box on top of it so that it flips over like this. Except for, well, like that. Uh, and he's pulling it back after he does that, so it looks like that. It's a pretty cool magic moment. I don't prefer it. Uh, so for me, what I do instead, as I did in the performance, was I did a variation of the Rub-A-Dub Vanish, which looks like that. And basically, it's the same action. You're just pushing out the card and then pulling it back with your thumb, just like that. And the rub-a-dub vanish, basically I'm covering the card with my hand and as I cover it, then I'm pulling the card back. And then of course it looks like it's vanished, but of course I've just pulled the card back over here. So uh, the variation that I do here, however, is I'm going to come over, I'm going to cover it as if I'm picking it up like this, like I'm going to palm it. But I pull it back at the same time, all right? And I'm just going to kind of tilt my hand as I do it, wrist kill it so they don't see as it's pulling back. I'm going to set it over here. It looks like I'm holding, it looks to the spectator like I've held the card. And keep in mind, this looks a lot better when you actually are using misdirection in performance than uh, on camera. And then all I'm going to do is I like to pick this up. Uh, I like to set it here. And then all I do is I pretend to kind of rub the card, kind of squish it, and then throw it down. And as I do, I just kind of flip over this card box like this. And it looks like I've just put the card on there. Another way you can do this is you can hold it in your hand like this and flip it with your fingers. And that's another way you can do it is you can like squish the card and do like that. And that's a much better magic moment in my opinion. I prefer that way. For some reason, I did it the other way in the performance. Just I couldn't. I don't know why. When I do magic videos, I can do like a performance perfectly beforehand. And then when I start filming, then I just completely mess everything up. So uh, I just ended up doing that in the performance. But uh, it's just doing that and then... It's really all just faking it. You're really just faking fusing a card on there, but to the spectator, it looks like you just fused the Eight of Diamonds onto there. All right? And that's really all there is to this trick. So anyway, let's just head to the outro. All right, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I had a lot of fun making that video. I can't wait for you guys to try this out for yourself. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, not every box you make is gonna be perfect. Uh, you may have to modify the box you make a little bit uh, when you make this gimmick, and it may take you a few tries to get the box to the point where it looks pretty good. Like this here, this honestly isn't the best box I made. I made it crunched under time, but even so, it works pretty well. Um, and honestly, I could have done better if I spent more time on it, but I didn't for the sake of the video. But anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.